but the genesis of asthma. But why do people get asthma and how can this disease be deadly? Asthma affects the respiratory system, particularly the smaller airways such as the bronchi and bronchioles. These airways have an inner lining called the mucosa that's surrounded by a layer of smooth muscle. In people with asthma, the airways are chronically inflamed which can make them hyper-responsive to certain triggers. Some of many asthma triggers include tobacco, smoke, pollen, dust, fragrances, exercise, cold weather, stress, and even the common cold. When people with asthma are exposed to these triggers, an asthma attack or exacerbation can occur. But how exactly do such everyday factors lead to an asthma attack? If an asthmatic is exposed to a trigger, the smooth rings of muscle that circle the small airways in their lungs contract and become narrow. Simultaneously, the trigger worsens inflammation causing the mucosal lining to become more swollen and secrete more mucus. Under normal conditions, the body uses this mucus to trap and clear particles like pollen or dust, but during an asthma attack, it blocks the narrowed airways, making it even harder to breathe. These effects lead to the symptoms of asthma. Smooth muscle constriction results in the feeling of chest tightness, excess mucus and increased inflammation can cause coughing. And the wheezing noise? That happens because as the airway constricts, air whistles as it passes through the narrowed space. These symptoms may make a person feel like they're running out of air, yet counterintuitively, during an asthma attack, the inflammation can make it harder to exhale than inhale. Over time, this leads to an excess of air in the lungs, a phenomenon known as hyperinflation. The trapping of air inside the lungs forces the body to work harder, to move air in and out of them. Over time, this can lead to reduced oxygen delivery to body's organs and tissues. Sometimes, in an untreated asthma attacks, the body can't keep up which can lead to death from lack of oxygen. Clinical Manifestations of Asthma Three most common symptoms. First most common symptom is cough, with or without mucus production. Mucus tightly wedged in a narrowed airway that the patient cannot cough it up. Next common symptom is generalized chest tightness and dysmy. The last symptom is wheezing. It is the sound of airflow through narrowed airways. It may occur during inspiration or expiration. An asthma attack often night or early in the morning, possibly because of circadian variations that influence airway receptor threshold. And lastly, symptoms of exercise-induced asthma include maximal symptoms during exercise, absence of nocturnal symptoms, and choking sensation. Diagnostic and Laboratory Procedures Sputum and blood tests disclose eosinophilia elevated levels of eosinophils, serum levels of IgE elevated if allergies present, ABG analysis and pulse oximetry reveal hypoxemia. Spirometry This test estimates the narrowing of your bronchial tubes by checking how much air you can exhale after a deep breath and how fast you can breathe out. Peak flow. A peak flow meter is a simple device that measures how hard you can breathe out. Lower than usual peak flow readings are a sign that your lungs may not be working as well and that your asthma may be getting worse.
Treatment modalities. First lip breathing. First lip breathing improves breathing patterns by moving old air out of the lungs and allowing for new air to enter the lungs. Maintain head of bed elevated. This promotes maximum lung expansion and assess in breathing. Plan for periods of rest between activities. Activity increases metabolic rate and oxygen requirements. Medical management. Short-acting beta-2 adrenergic agonists such as albuterol, nivalbuterol, and terbutalin. Short-acting beta-2 agonists are bronchodilators. They relax the muscles lining in the airways that carry air to the lungs. Treatment of choice for acute exacerbation of asthma. Inhaled corticosteroids such as bodicinide, zoticason, beclometason, and bometason. Corticosteroids reduce inflammation in the airways that carry air to the lungs and reduce the mucus made by the bronchial tubes. Inhaled steroids should be given after beta-2 adrenergic agonists. Other medications are anticholinergics, chromoline sodium, nidochromil, long-acting beta-2 agonists, leukotriene modifiers, or antileukotrins immuno modulators. The primary treatment for asthma are inhalers. Inhalers help asthmatics both control and prevent their asthma symptoms. Inhalers transport medication along the affected airways using a liquid mist or fine powder to treat the problem at its source. They come in two forms. They are reliever medications which treat symptoms immediately and contain beta agonists. Beta agonists can relax constricted muscles allowing the airways to widen so more air can travel into and out of the lungs. The other form of inhalers serve as preventive medications, which treat asthma symptoms over a long term and contain corticosteroids. Corticosteroids reduce airway sensitivity and inflammation, so asthma can be kept under control. They're also vital in preventing long-term damage from chronic inflammation, which can cause scarring of the airways. Surgical Management When asthma becomes too severe, surgical intervention is needed. Bronchial thermoplasty is a treatment for severe asthma. It's a way to open your airways. The procedure uses gentle heat to shrink the smooth vessels in your lungs, the ones that tighten during asthma attacks and make it hard to breathe. Nursing Diagnosis and Management Nursing Diagnosis An effective airway clearance related to increased production of mucus and bronchospasm. Nursing Management Assess the client's vital signs as needed while in distress. It is important to assess the client's vital signs because increased blood pressure Respiratory rate and heart rate may occur during the initial hypoxia and hypercapnia, and when it becomes severe, BP and heart rate drops and respiratory failure may result. Assess the patient's respiratory rate, depth, and rhythm. Changes in the respiratory rate and rhythm may indicate an early sign of impending respiratory distress. Assess patient for signs of dysmia, such as flaring of nostrils, chest retractions, and use of accessory muscles, for this may indicate respiratory distress. Monitor oxygen saturation. To check how well the patient's heart is pumping oxygen through their body. Maintain the patient's head of bed elevated. This promotes a maximum lung expansion and assess in breathing. 
plan for periods of rest between activities. Activity increases metabolic rate and oxygen requirements. Nursing diagnosis. Impaired gas exchange related to altered delivery of inspired oxygen. Assess breed sounds and adventitious sounds such as wheezes and streeter. Diminishing wheezing and indistinct breed sounds are suggestive findings and that indicate impending respiratory failure. Assess the relationship of inspiration to expiration. Reactive airways allow air to move into the lungs more easily than out of the lungs. If the client is gasping for air, instruction for effective breathing is needed. Encourage client to use pursed lip breathing for exhalation. Pursed lip breathing improves breathing pattern by moving old air out of the lungs and allowing for new air to enter the lungs. Administer medication as ordered. Prognosis Asthma is a chronic disease with no cure. For people with mild to moderate disease, particularly earlier in life, Asthma can improve with time or go into remission for long periods of time. Improvement of symptoms can be achieved in people with difficult to treat asthma. Status Asthmaticus It is used to describe rapid onset severe and persistent asthma that does not respond to conventional therapy. The attacks can occur with little or no warning and can progress rapidly to asphyxiation or a condition of deficient supply of oxygen to the body. Infection, anxiety, nebulizer abuse, dehydration, increased adrenergic blockage, and non-specific irritant may contribute to these episodes. Clinical Manifestation Tachypnea, labored respirations with increased effort on exhalation, suprasternal retractions, use of accessory muscles of respiration, diminished breath sounds, decreased ability to speak in phrases or sentences, anxiety, irritability, fatigue, headache, impaired mental functioning, Muscle twitching, somnolence, diaphoresis from continued carbon dioxide retention, tachycardia, elevated BP, heart failure, and death from suffocation may manifest in this kind of patient. Pathogenesis The basic characteristic of asthma decrease the diameter of bronchi and occur in status asthmaticus. A ventilation perfusion abnormality results in alkalosis. With a decreased partial carbon dioxide and increased pH, a status asthmaticus presents the partial carbon dioxide increases and the pH decreases, reflecting in respiratory acidosis. Diagnostic exams. Well, chest x-ray is not an asthma test, but it is used to make sure nothing else is causing your asthma symptoms. Bronchoscope used to visually examine the airways and collect fluid and tissue that can help guide effective therapy for difficult to treat asthma. Treatment modalities. Chest physiotherapy can be used to strengthen the body and its ability to breathe in general thereby reducing the onset of asthma attacks. Initiate mechanical ventilation if necessary. Remove secretions by suctioning. Medical management. Mycolytic drugs used to help clear mucus from lungs. Expectorant induces discharge or expulsion of mucus from the respiratory tract, while antibiotic is used in during cases of respiratory infection. Levalbuterol is used to prevent or relieve the symptoms of asthma. Albuterol is a bronchodilator that relaxes muscles in the airways and increases air flow to the lungs. 
corticosteroids are given to treat inflammation of airways, while ipatropium is a short-acting anticholinergic approved for use in the treatment of reversible airways obstruction in acute and chronic asthma. Bronchial thermoplasty is a surgical treatment for severe asthma that uses gentle heat to shrink the smooth muscles in your lungs. Nursing Diagnosis and Nursing Interventions Nursing Diagnosis and Effective Breeding Pattern Related to Presence of Secretions Risk for Activity Intolerance Related to Decreased Oxygenation Nursing Management Monitor Respiratory Rate and Oxygen Saturation Continuously Frequently monitor arterial blood gas levels BP electrocardiogram. Administer repeated aerosol treatments with beta-2 agonist bronchodilators such as albuterol or levalbuterol. Add anticholinergic epitropium as prescribed. Administer with caution until the metabolic and respiratory acidosis and hypoxemia have been corrected. Monitor IV therapy. Elevate the patient's anxiety and fear by acting calmly and by reassuring the patient during an attack. Stay with the patient until the attack subsides. Fluids are given to treat dehydration and loosen secretions. Provide continuous humidified oxygen via nasal cannula as prescribed. Patients with associated COPD or emphysema are at risk for depressed, hypoxemic ventilatory drive, thus compounding respiratory insufficiency to so use oxygen cautiously. Prognosis If a complicating illness like congestive heart failure or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is not present, then status asthmaticus has a good prognosis provided treatment has ensued timely. Good day! Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have learned a lot from this video. Click like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more educational videos related to medical surgical nursing.